In this video, we are going to take a look at a type of power series called a Taylor series and a Maclaurin series. So in our first definition here, definition of a Taylor series, we have on the left-hand side of the equal sign here, um, a typical power series because we have um, a variable x raised to some power. But a couple of things that are unique about this is this particular power series has derivatives in it. And that's what the f to the n is. That means the um, nth derivative of the function. First derivative, second derivative, third derivative, on and on and on. So this particular type of power series called a Taylor or a Maclaurin series has a uh, a, a derivative in each term. And so in order to be able to find a Taylor series, you need to have a function that has an infinite number of derivatives. And so there are quite a few functions that actually do have an infinite number of derivatives. You're also going to notice that these types of power series almost always have a factorial in it. All right. On the right-hand side of this equal sign over here, we have what is referred to as the Taylor polynomial. The Taylor polynomial. And so the first term of the Taylor polynomial is simply the function evaluated at A. And we say that A is the center of this particular series. Now, what's the difference between a Taylor series and a Maclaurin series? Well, a Taylor series can be centered at any value of A, but a Maclaurin series is a very specific type of Taylor series where it is centered at A equals zero. So if A equals zero, which is very common, it's called a Maclaurin series. If A is any other number, then it's simply a Taylor series. So a Maclaurin series is a type of Taylor series. So sometimes I use the two terms interchangeably. So the first term is simply the function evaluated at A. The second term of the Taylor polynomial is the uh, first derivative at A times x minus A. And then the next derivative is the second derivative of A divided by 2 factorial times x minus A squared on and on and on until we get to f to the n of a, the nth derivative of a, divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n. Now, it's not that difficult of a formula to memorize um, because there are some patterns here, which I will talk about. So we have a Taylor series in this particular form right here, the Taylor series, and when you expand the Taylor series, you have a Taylor polynomial. So the Taylor series, when you expand it term by term by term, is what we call a Taylor polynomial. Now, if you've forgotten what a polynomial is, let me just explain real quick what a polynomial is. I'll do that down here in, let's say, green. So a polynomial is the sum or difference of powers of x. Sum or difference of powers of x, where the power of x is a non-negative integer. So as an example, if we have the linear function 3x minus 1, that is a polynomial. We call a linear function a first-degree polynomial. It has a power of x, x to the first power, and 1 is really x to the 0 power. A constant can be thought of as being multiplied by x to the 0. So remember I said that the power of x has to be a non-negative integer non-negative integer. So it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So a quadratic function, 4x squared plus 2x, is a polynomial. Or negative 1 half x cubed plus 3. Those are all examples of polynomial functions. So that's what we are creating when we, um, oops, when we create a Taylor polynomial is we are creating a series of terms that have powers of x that are non-negative integers. All right, so this definition here is the definition of a Taylor polynomial. And so this is exactly what we saw up above, right? That's the same thing as up here, except now we are calling it 
p sub n of x, the nth polynomial to the nth term of x. All right, so let's put all this to use. This is going to be a short video because my video recording thing has not been working well, so I don't want to uh, record a half an hour video and find out it didn't record. So we're just going to do one example here. So my function is the log of x, and it is centered at x equals 1. In other words, a is equal to 1. So because a is equal to 1, it is going to be a Taylor polynomial. And we want to find the first four terms. So the way that I like to do this is very methodically. I write out f of x. And so the f of x is log of x. And then I find what is f of 1, that function evaluated 1. Well, the log of 1 is 0. I then find the derivative of f of x, which the derivative of the log of x is 1 over x. And evaluating that at 1, we get 1. The second derivative is negative 1 over x squared. Evaluating that at 1, we get negative 1. The third derivative is 2 over x cubed. Evaluating that at 1, we get 2. Now, the next thing that I like to do is to put this together, or I like to write the formula out. Write out the formula for the Taylor polynomial f of a plus f prime of a over x minus a plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over 2. And I said that there was a pattern to this, and you should be able to see the pattern. You should notice that here we have the first derivative, x minus a to the first power, and divided by 1 factorial. That's not too easy to see. Let's do green. 1 factorial and raise the first. This is the second derivative raised x minus a to the second over second um, factorial. Third derivative of a, x minus a to the third power, and th three factorial. So the next term would be the fourth derivative of a times x minus a to the fourth over four factorial, plus the fifth derivative of a, x minus a to the fifth over five factorial, on and on and on. So that's the pattern. Putting all that together, we end up with <clears throat> this polynomial. Now, the first term is f of a, which was just 0. The second term, it's f prime of a times x minus a to the first. So f prime of a was 1 times x minus a to the first over 1 factorial. And then here we have... Uh, negative 1, f double prime of a is negative 1, times x minus a squared over 2 factorial. And so over here, you have negative 1 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. But remember, 2 factorial is just 2. And so the negative 1 divided by 2 is just 1 half. So you simplify the factorials. Sometimes you don't want to simplify the factorials. Sometimes you do. And then finally, we have the third derivative of 1 was uh, 2. So here we had 2 times x minus 1 to the third power over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2. The 2s cancel out, leaving me with a 1 third x minus 3 to the third power. And so that is my Taylor polynomial right here. And let's clean that up and take a look at it. Box that. Taylor polynomial. Now, we don't really need to write the zero at the beginning, but we would want to write the rest of it. All right, that's all I'm going to do with this video. I'm going to do some other videos on some of the other examples.